Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Maundy Thursday evening service, the night that Jesus ate with his disciples before Good Friday. It's good that we're gathered together to remember what happened this night, to celebrate together, to share some scripture and some story. And may God bless us as we partake of this time, the scripture, and this feast together. People are still trickling in, and you're welcome to come trickle in and sit in the seats that are up here around us. And uh, I had mine there. Okay, thanks, Val. So let us worship God on this Maundy Thursday evening. The word Maundy is derived from the Latin word manda- mandatum, meaning commandment, referring to Jesus' commandment to love one another as he, had loved, he has loved us from John 13, 34. This commandment is at the heart of Maundy Thursday. Please join with me in, in the call to worship as we read responsively. We join a solemn journey of three days, a journey where we remember events that changed the world and our own lives. Followers of Jesus had been taking this journey since his first followers took it long, long ago. Celebrating together. On this night, Jesus gathered with his disciples in an upper room to share the Passover feast. The disciples were full of hope, happy to be celebrating this special time together. This is the night of servitude. On this night, Jesus took a towel and basin and washed his disciples' feet. On this night, he told them to do the same for others, to show them love, to show their love for him and for one another. This is the night of invitation. On this night, Jesus broke bread and shared wine with his followers for the last time and invited them to remember him, to encounter him anew whenever they did the same. This is the night of being together. On this night, we come together as followers of Jesus. We come after a time of wandering, just as the first disciples did. We come with our questions, with our challenges, with our hopes, with our care for each other, just as the first followers did. We come to be together in the presence of Jesus. This is the night of love. Let us worship God as we sing together from uh, Voices United 147, verses 1 and 3 of What Wondrous Love Is This. We'll remain seated for our service. Uh, Let us sing together, remaining seated.
The road to Jerusalem had been a long, dusty trail. The disciples had willingly followed this man, this Jesus. Now was the time of his triumph, they felt. At last, here in the holy city of Jerusalem, God's kingdom would be made manifest. I'm Peter. I was a fisherman, but he called me to become someone who fishes for people. And I left my nets, my boats, and my family and followed him. I never thought I'd be here in this place with this man. He is God's son, there's no doubt about that. And now we have gathered for a meal and enjoyed each other's company. I don't know what lies ahead, but I am sure that something incredible is going to happen. I'm James. I remember the first time I heard him speak. I had gone to hear him with my brother John. There was something so compelling about this man, something which seemed to touch my very soul. Then one day he came to the lake shore and asked us to follow him. Follow him over hills and through valleys, into cities and towns. The things we witnessed, we saw healing, hope restored, lessons taught. The lives of people were changed. It was exciting. I'm not sure what tomorrow will bring, but I know it will be something exciting. I'm John. Everyone else seems so calm, but there is an uneasiness in my soul tonight. Something is wrong, at least that is how I feel. Things have been rather hectic, and this should be a wonderful time to share a meal, but I can't help the way I feel. I just don't want this journey to end. I know there are wondrous things yet to happen, but somehow, this sense of foreboding is sneaking into my spirit. Well, it has been a nice meal, although I can tell you that it cost us a pretty penny to gather all the supplies. He, this Jesus, talks about the kingdom of God being at hand, and he has done some miraculous things. But when is it truly coming? We have seen in the temple every day. We have been in the temple every day. He preaches and proclaims God's presence, but we need to have action right here and now. The first scripture is from John 13, verses 2 to 17. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet, their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. 
Very I t- truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I will invite you in a moment to partake of a ritual that is a part of the Maundy Thursday story, to wash each other's hands as a reminder of Jesus washing the disciples' feet as a reminder of his call for us to see each other and to serve each other. But before we do, let us pray together. Pure and holy God, cleanse me through and through. May this act of hand washing and every act of hand washing remind me of my baptism, remind me that I am your beloved child. May this act of hand washing and every act of hand washing remind me that you created a way out of no way, leading your people to escape slavery through the Red Sea. May this act of hand washing and every act of hand washing remind me of your command to love one another and that in this washing I serve my neighbor. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. We have uh, washcloths here for our hands. Please take one and wash the hands of the person beside you.
Jesus, we are gathered here tonight. We remember. We remember that you preached the good news that God's kingdom has drawn near, that you gathered disciples then and now to learn and show the world what life in God's reign means. Healing, cleansing, new sight, food for the hungry, freedom for the oppressed, Love poured out for all. We remember that you took a towel and basin, washed your disciples' feet, and taught them and us to do likewise. We remember the night you were betrayed. You took the bread, blessed it, and broke it. and gave it to your disciples. Remember your words, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. We remember. We remember when you took the cup, praised God, and shared it.
we remember your words. Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do it in remembrance of me. We remember. Let us pray. O Holy One, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, connected us with Christ, and reminded us of the grace of your love. Amen. The second scripture is from Matthew 26, verses 36 to 44. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. We're going to close with another um, Taze hymn. So you can sit and listen for a time and pray privately and then just get up and leave silently whenever you are ready. <laughs> 